pains in your back. So, <clears throat> so those are my options for pain relief, massage, medication, and epidural. Um, if I decide I want medicinal pain relief, I'd prefer, and then again, you know, that's um, an epidural or a spinal block and sy systematic uh, medication. So I'm I'm perfectly okay with that at this at this stage in my life. <laughs> at this stage in my life, um, pushing. When it comes time to push, I decided that I would like to be coached on when to push and how long to push. That's pretty much how things went with my daughter, um, <clears throat> the physician, my OBGYN. You know, she was down in position and. She was monitoring everything, and I trust her. That's a very important thing. You need to trust your physician. I trust her, and um, and she told me when to push. She told me, you know, okay, stop. You know, she gave me a lot of guidance with regards to pushing, and we were able to deliver my daughter without me having an episiotomy. So I'm really super excited about that, and hopefully I can do that again. But that's also in the birth plan, and I'll talk to you about that too. So that was page one and two um, on the vaginal birth. I would like to view the birth using a mirror. I want to touch my baby's head as it crowns and I would like for the room to be as quiet as possible with the exception, you know, of my relaxing music in the background. And I would like to give birth without an episiotomy. However, I made a note that if she sees that I'm beginning to tear that I want her to go ahead and do the episiotomy because if we can have a successful birth without me tearing, that's my goal. However, I don't want to just tear or rip and then, you know, it's all, you know, it's easier for them to suture you up if they, if they cut and do the episiotomy rather than allowing you to tear and then suture you up. So we had a successful round the first time. I'm hoping this time is as successful as the first one, but we'll see, okay? Um, after the birth, um, I would like to hold my baby right away. And they did that the first time with Alexis. They just plopped her right on my tummy and oh, she was so wrinkly and had a lot of stuff on her and just crying and cute. So I would like to hold my baby right away, putting off any procedures that aren't urgent. I would like to breastfeed as soon as possible. And I would like for my partner to cut the umbilical cord. So those are the options that I really want. And one thing I'm going to talk to my doctor about, they have an, um, an option on here to wait until the umbilical cord stops pulsating before it's clamped and cut. And so I'm going to talk to my doctor about that and see how big of a deal that is or if it's just a psychological thing or if it causes some type of distress to the child when it's cut before the um, cord stops pulsating. So um, I'm going to put a star by that one. Um, I plan to have a vaginal birth, but however, you know, just in case there's a C-section, um, I made my selections there for my partner to be present at all times during the operation for the screen to be lowered a bit <laughs> so I can see my baby being delivered. Um, <clears throat> the baby to be given to my partner as soon as he or she is, well, she is dried if appropriate and to breastfeed my baby in the recovery room. So those are the options that I picked for c-section even though I'm expecting vaginal but again with labor and delivery delivery you know we have an idea but we never really know how it's gonna go so you have to you know plan for whatever um, cord blood banking <clears throat> I'm not gonna do either option I'm not gonna donate to a public bank nor am I going to save it privately uh, postpartum Postpartum, so after the delivery, this is what I would like to happen. I would like all newborn procedures to take place in my presence for my partner to stay with the baby at all times if if I can't be there, to stay in a private room, and to have a cot provided for my partner. So pretty much with the cot, there, there was like a layout, like a... Um, a sofa that converted into a bed or some type of chair that converted to a bed 
but I'm not sure if he'll be able to spend the night just, you know, with regards to our babysitting issues. So, so we'll see, but I would like to at least have something for him in case he does, you know, stay late or whatever. Um, and I would like, you know, they give the option for, you know, 24 hour rooming with your baby, um, to, you know, have your baby in only when you're awake or to have your baby brought to you for feedings. So what I decided to do was to make my decision later, depending on how I'm feeling, because I'm not quite sure how I'm going to feel. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to, what place I'm going to be in, you know, right after labor and delivery. So I'll just make that decision based on how I'm feeling afterwards. Although I know I'm probably going to want her with me like 24 seven, but sometimes you're just so tired and you don't want to, you know, you know, be asleep and, and your baby is so new and, you know, just born. And so it's, you know, it's just one of those things. So I'll just make that decision later, depending on how I'm feeling. And I would like for my daughter to be brought in to see me and the new baby as soon as possible. Um, feeding issues. I want to breastfeed exclusively. However, if the breastfeeding doesn't go as well as planned, um, I will combine breastfeeding and formula feeding. But like I said, my goal is to breastfeed exclusively, but I don't want, you know, to starve my, my baby. Um, do not offer my baby sugar water or formula. You know, I want that to be my decision, you know, in terms of giving her formula, because that's my plan B. So as long as I'm working on plan A, I don't want my plan B interrupted by someone giving her formula. Um, and I'm okay with her having a pacifier. Um, circumcision, okay, I'm planning on having a girl, but just in case it's a boy, you know, like really what's up with that. Just in case it's a boy, I want him to be uh, circumcised at the hospital. And I'm like, you know, I'm the whole circumcision thing. I'm like, oh my God, if it is a boy and then they have to cut him. And what if they don't cut him right? And so I'm like really super paranoid about that. But I guess, I don't know what corrective surgery later. I don't, I don't know. But, um, I am opting to have him circumcised at the hospital. Um, discharge I like to and they give you some options on being discharged but what I chose was to wait and see how I feel before deciding about the timing of the hospital discharge I feel like I'm not in a position now to say send me home as soon as possible or you know I want to stay as long as possible I'm just gonna wait and see pretty much how I feel before I um, before I rush off to the hospital, you know. So I mean, rush rush back home, you know. So anywho, that is my birth plan, pretty much in a nutshell. Two things about the birth plan that I well, two things about the birth plan that I like, um, and, and not necessarily like, but two things about the birth plan that needs to be acknowledged. The first thing is, it's the plan. You know, it's not necessarily the way things are going to go. It is just that. It's the plan. So we have to remember that and keep that in mind. The next thing to remember with regards to the birth plan is that it's a great tool to open up communication with you and your physician, you know, to discuss what your expectations are during labor, delivery, and after delivery, the postpartum phases, the things that take place after delivery. It opens up that communication. Your doctor can then in turn let you know what is realistic and what's not realistic and you know you can go from there um, that's the thing that I like about the birth plan a lot it opens up that line of communication the thing that I'm a bit concerned about the birth plan is is that you have to remember it's the plan it's not necessarily going to go that way I have to remember it's the plan and it may not necessarily go the way that I have it laid out on paper so um, so that's extremely important um, to remember number one 
it's a plan it, it, it may not happen the way you have it written out number two uh, it is a great tool to open up that communication and to, to let the staff know okay I would like to have music played I would like to have the lights dimmed I would like to have my husband you know cut the umbilical cord or help catch the baby or you know things like that so just keep that in mind with the process again like I said I found my plan at babycenter.com and I have a doctor's appointment this week and I'm going to talk to my doctor about the plan and you know what just for kicks I'll do a follow-up video just so you can see how it helped um, as a communication tool and and it may be some things that the hospital will allow it may be some things that the hospital won't allow so I'll come back and, you know, we'll talk about that later. But thanks for checking in with me. You know, as always, I encourage everyone to um, remain positive. You know, this situation is not here to stay. Before long, you know, we'll be having our healthy, happy babies. And we'll, we'll be mommies. We'll be walking around the house again. We'll be mobile. <laughs> baking cookies and all that good stuff so um just have a great day and like i said i'll check back with everyone after my doctor's appointment this week to let you know how the birthing plan discussion went so anyway take care and bye for now